just a hack. It's just an absolute hack. And he gets his ass kicked by his teammates every week. It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Welcome back to Hack City. Joe DeLeon, Sean Anderson, two former college football players from the University of Rhode Island. We are here to preview the FCS football national championship. It's been a few weeks since we've had game action. And as always, we're going to get to witness South Dakota State face off with Montana. South Dakota State, bit of an unscathed path thus far to get to the national championship. Meanwhile, Montana has scratched and clawed and stayed resilient every step of the way to get themselves into this position. Sean, I'm excited for this game. It's annoying as hell that this is still being played on Sunday during the final week of NFL action when there's nothing going on this Saturday. But I digress. We will share our thoughts before we get to that. Um, Sean, can you just share with our listeners a word from Bet Online? By the way, for our listeners, Bet Online currently has South Dakota State minus 13 over under set at 49 and a half. Yeah, I saw lines at 12 and a half also for South Dakota State. Uh, so whether you think Montana should be an underdog by that amount, or if you think that's appropriate for South Dakota State, make sure to place a bet. Thank you, Loud Fire Truck in Arlington. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Head to bet online uh, if you want to uh, make some money on this game. You're smart. You've been watching your team all year. You've been watching Montana all year. You've been watching the Jackrabbits all year. You know what they're going to do. Head there today to get in on the action. Remember to use promo code Believe. That's B L E A V to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Thank you, Sean. Uh, over under on the amount of fire trucks that uh, blow through. Won't the, be the last the one. Background. Won't be the last one. <laughs> um, all right. So this game, we've had an incredible season of FCS football. I know that this will certainly annoy Montana fans, which we've done enough, and I don't really care at this point if they're annoyed because there's no making them happy. Um, some of them happy. It felt like the whole year, Sean, we've played up until this point to find out who was going to play South Dakota State for their next national championship win. It felt like who was going to be the poor soul that has to face them as they're on this Death Star type run. I feel like South Dakota State feels like Georgia. It, It feels like they are just this really well rounded, cohesive unit that has done everything right. And we were waiting to see who would rise amongst the ashes. It ends up being Montana. Montana's had a fantastic season since their little bit of a slow start to the year. They have exploded. They've been one of the best rushing teams in college football. Their defense has been physical, but it is going to be an uphill battle. And we're going to highlight what each team should really do to help win them, help them win this game. But it is going to be a uphill battle for Montana. And I think that that 13 point line it's it's pretty justified based on how good South Dakota South Dakota State is. Yeah, South Dakota State has been everything that you've mentioned. Uh, and then Montana, I feel like won a bit of a championship by making it to the championship, and that's going to sound patronizing. And I'm not trying to troll Montana fans again, but you had a crazy ass season. You had a roller coaster first half, second half. You caught fire and you made it all the way here. So as great as it's been, I'm not trying to patronize what I said, you know, you, you, you want a championship by making it here to play South Dakota State. South Dakota State's been at the top. It's been a race all season to see who's going to chase them. We knew that. We knew that going into the season that someone was going to be chasing South Dakota State at the top, and we never expected them to leave, and they didn't. Montana won the championship of being able to go and play them to try to dethrone South Dakota State. And I think they're going to offer them the best challenge that they've had all year. Montana State earlier in the season, still pretty fresh. But uh, right now, I I, I think Montana is really going to give them their best. And they have to, obviously. They just really have to. I I have more details on what each team should do to get the edge soon. Now, I will say, I think it's really to Montana's benefit that they've been challenged over the past couple of weeks that they've had to endure finding ways to close out and finish off difficult opponents. That level of fortitude to withstand those challenges is only going to help them against a a difficult opponent in South Dakota State. 
if this game does get close and Montana State does keep it within, or Mon, sorry, Mon, not Montana State, Montana keeps this within striking distance, I know that they have the experience to pull from, to know what it's like to go through the final drive or to go to overtime and to convert on a two-point conversion, to convert on a goal-to-go situation in overtime. All of that is so, so important. Not saying that South Dakota State has a disadvantage because they're not prepared for that, but they haven't really been tested. Like Their biggest test this playoffs was against Villanova, which was a spread-you-out type of a team. And they still finished them off pretty handedly in the second, you know, the second final stretch of that game there. So I think that, that there is some importance that comes into play here for Montana having been been uh, been tested. I think Montana needs to be the sharper team in this game. And we saw it a lot during the bowl season where teams took off some time and then they had to get reacclimated to the game of football again. The pre-snap penalties, you see them, and that's just a rust thing. When you're really in the throes of the season unless you get a real wrench thrown in the design game day, you're not going to have many pre-snap penalties. You just, you're just too locked in. Uh, so being able to eliminate those, not have any rust uh, for Montana would be important. If they could pick up right where they started a- a- and be that hot again and be that competitive again, then it's going to be a closer game than what the spread entails. But if they come back sloppy and they come back like, you know, a team that hadn't played football in a month, because we know South Dakota State's going to look like they played football. Uh, maybe the first couple drives, you, there's still a little bit of rust, but that can't continue into into uh, the second quarter. It just cannot. Montana needs to win that battle of penalties and locked inedness to uh, to really stay in this game. I love the new uh, made up word game going. that we play on the show. I also think to further that point. South Dakota State has seemingly been one of those teams that is very advantageous to mistakes. They have capitalized very aggressively on mistakes when opposing teams turn the ball over, they give the ball to them. I mean, we saw it against Albany. There was an early turnover, and the game was over after the early turnover. That's not going to happen against Montana because uh, they're a much tougher opponent than that. But if you're Montana... I'm not going to do the whole, you have to play perfect. Any team needs to play perfect and and it's important to win football games, but eliminating turnovers at most, you can really turn the ball over once. And if you do, you need to hope it's not in your own territory because South Dakota state is the type of team. I I wonder, we don't really have a lot of advanced metrics, but for, for FCS football, but I would wonder what the um, rate in which, or the points in which, South Dakota State scores off of opposing turnovers because I would bet it's probably up there in the top 20. I would I would wager that they're in the top five. I just you have to expect it because all all of Saban's championship teams, right? Uh, Just to draw a comparison, the biggest thing for them was turnover differential. They were ball hawks and then they were able to convert that into points. South Dakota State feels the same to me. If they get a turnover, then they are a big momentum team and they can strike quickly. It's an Isaiah Davis run. It's a Yankee brother catch. And then they're scoring in the next two plays. Uh, they, they are just too surgical when they have momentum. And Montana needs to keep them from getting that. And to that point, to add context, they are tied fifth in turnovers gained. So that's the closest we're probably going to get because I, I don't know of – I've looked – Unless there's one that I'm missing, I don't know of any advanced metric sites that we really have out there for FCS football. It's even hard to find it for FBS football. But uh, 26 turnovers on the year, and we have seen multiple games where South Dakota State has put points on the board. The other thing for me, Sean, that I think is really important for this game for Montana, and I feel that they're equipped to do this because they have such a well-coached defense, you have to rally to the football, and you can't allow for – Isaiah Davis to pick up yards after contact. You can't allow him to break tackles. You have to swarm and limit. He's going to get those six-yard gains where he blows through the hole, but you have to tackle him after the six yards. You have to limit his ability to pick up extra yards and rally, and your linebackers have to play sound tackling football, which is easier said than done, but that is going to be critical. And on top of that, South Dakota State is sixth in the country in yards per completion, which is massive and we've seen all year long that the Yankee twins and this whole offense have been dangerous after the catch and they've been willing and aggressive to stretch the field they're not necessarily a team that's going to just go over the top over the top 
A lot of the yards that they do produce is because they've got receivers who will beat you after the catch that are experienced and savvy at finding those extra yards. So this goes all in line with this. You have to rally to the football, tackle their receivers after the catch. If they pick up a first down, do not let them pick up even more yardage. It feels like that's where you really get demoralized. Them killing you after the catch and killing you after contact. South Dakota State is just going to make you pay, and that's what veteran strong teams do. And Montana is a team similarly built to that. Neither quarterbacks turn the ball over much. I think Gronowski has four picks. McDowell has three on the season. So the running backs are going to play a huge game uh, in who can either break one or be the most consistent. And it's hard to be, it's hard to break more than Isaiah Davis, and it's hard to be more consistent than him. But Montana's Eli Gilman has had a great season. He is a difference maker, and he has stepped up. And I believe after the North Dakota State win, we both acknowledge that without him, Montana probably doesn't make it this far. To have a running back that you can lean on to get your touchdowns when you need them and to get your first downs when you need them, vitally important. So the, both teams are built pretty similar. They both have playmakers, uh, uh, rational quarterbacks, but can make the right mm. uh, that that can make the right decisions and sometimes a big splash play. Running backs that can churn or or take it uh, the distance, and then a good wide receiver core. I mean, South Dakota State, Montana's not without really danger. Junior Bergen is is number one stop. That is that is a highlighter guy that you have to say, where's he at? Where is he at? We are tracking him. We can't let him beat us because he will. He will. He beat North Dakota State. He did. He had, he had the, the, the crazy return touchdown and then getting the edge. If he gets the edge on you, you're not going to tackle him without a safety being the one because linebacker is not going to catch him. A far side corner is not going to get him. It's got to be that front side safety. Now, for the side of things with South Dakota State, I, I think as most could imagine, there's probably there's not really a lot of complex preparations that I think that or not preparation preparations the wrong word adjustments that South Dakota State needs to make. It, it's very easy and cliche to say, you know, South Dakota State, you've gotten this far, play your game of football, blah blah blah. I want to take that a step further though. One thing that really stands out to me, and I think that the major thing that stands out to me is what Furman and North Dakota State put on film and showed. This is how you beat Montana, but we just didn't have the guys at certain positions to get the job done. And what I'm talking about is forcing Clifton McDowell to beat you as a passer and being aggressive and not allowing him to get into a rhythm as a runner. Against North Dakota State, he ended up only finishing that game with 17 yards rushing. I know that there were some sacks that were involved that lowers that, that rushing total, but they did not allow him to get going as a rusher. I even look at the college football playoff where Michigan um, was aggressive in going after a similar style player in Jalen Milrow. Milrow was a bit of a better passer, obviously, because he's playing in Alabama than, than Clifton McDowell. But what they did to get in his head is they played really good contain. They didn't over-pursue. They were willing to be patient to get the sack because they played good contain, and they sent pressure up the middle with their fast linebackers. I don't know if that plan necessarily works one-to-one -one in this game, but just the general approach needs to be be creative to not allow McDowell to get into a rhythm. If you allow him to get into a rhythm as a rusher, to pick up those, those gains when things aren't opening up in the passing game, all of that stuff, that is how Montana stays in the football game. It is going to run through Clifton McDowell. I know that there are other weapons that Montana has in Osmo and in Bergen that you talked about. Eli Gilman is, has been a phenomenal young player for Montana, but their success has hinged offensively on if Clifton McDowell can be in that rhythm. I'm glad you brought up the rhythm. Uh, I had a different word in mind for McDowell, and you can't let him get in his zone uh, because there's a weird zone that he gets in where he just starts scoring and starts taking over, and it's not like a carve you up. It's not a I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run for 80 yards on this drive and score, which he can do both. But the, the zone is where he starts getting comfortable and then starts walking that line. He walks that line right towards danger, but then uh, is, is able to make the pass. It's a weird zone that he gets in where when he takes a snap and you watch him and he makes one read, two read. After that two read, you say, oh, he, here comes the play. Here comes a play that he's going to make. And if you can get pressure on him, if you can let him not get comfortable back there, then South Dakota State could clinch it because – McDowell good enough to keep Montana in this game and then a little luck they could win that, that that's how I'm looking at it 
But if you, if you want to completely eliminate and, and take the luck out of it, get McDowell out of it. Pressure him. Sack him. Uh, suffocating coverage. Whatever it is. Have a linebacker ready for him if he scrambles. Just don't let him get in a zone where he's he can be underdog. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay with you. He's just kind of got like a, ah, uh, what is the mentality? Like almost like a street ball mentality. It, it, it's it's incredible mm. when when I when, when I see him go to work back there uh, at times. So keep him out of that zone. Uh, try to restrict him because when he has all the devices to play with, he's gonna make you pay. And as we know, in college football, one of the biggest spark plugs for an offense is an athletic mobile quarterback. I, and I want to establish this. I'm not really worried about Montana's defense. You know, like I, I really don't think that Montana's defense is going to have any trouble. I'm not saying that they're going to show up and shut down South Dakota State. But what I'm getting at here is they're going to play their game and they're going to get stops throughout this game in various drives. It's a matter of if Montana capitalizes on it. South Dakota State has to do everything in their power that – if they do get stood up, which again, it's going to happen. They have one of the best defenses in FCS football and their linebackers are fantastic. Their defensive line is very physical. You're not going to have those same rushing lanes that you had throughout the year. So at the end of the day, when they're on offense, getting after McDowell is going to really sway the game either in your direction by getting to him, getting in his head, forcing a turnover, getting those early sacks that you're talking about, or the opposite of it, of him getting into that zone you're talking about and being the legit threat that he can be. I mean, even the craziest thing too with McDowell though is that like even when he's not even totally on as a passer, he still finds ways to impact the yeah. game. But at the end of the day, you got to find ways to turn the football over and to really, really uh, put a lot of pressure on his shoulders. I mean, I hope they do. I don't want to change the name of the show to uh, Hawk City. <laughs> We're looking at it. We're one away. I forgot I said We're that. one away. <laughs> Well, okay. Well, we're it, officially it, entering, entering the bias takes uh, part of the show here. We can't. I can't let that happen. In that vein, our predictions for this game: how we think this is going to play out. I I think that South Dakota State wins this game. I, I I'm willing to bet we get a comment. Oh, of course these guys pick against Montana. No, I'm just no, being a realist. South Dakota State knows how to be here. Has been here before. Has won national titles already or has won a national title last year already and they have become one of the most fundamentally built teams in college football in fcs football i know and it's going to get brought up that yes they haven't been totally unscathed they have had a couple slight bumps but it feels like even though they're, they played close games they still handedly were in a position to win it even when they played like not their best football we still knew that South Dakota State was going to win those football games. It was kind of like Georgia this year. I'm going to keep comparing them to Georgia. Before the SEC championship game, they were dealing with injuries. They were dealing with complications, and they didn't play their best games. But against South Carolina, we knew that they were going to figure out a way to win. Against Auburn, we knew they were going to figure out a way to get, uh, get that win. Same thing applies here with you know, SIU. Played them close. Still, we knew... Yeah, if they need the ball in that final drive, they're going to march down. They're going to score. If they need that stop, they're going to get it because they have guys that have played so much goddamn football that they know how to respond to all of these things. I think Montana has done an amazing job getting this far, and I think that Montana is deservedly the second best team in FCS football and has proven me wrong. He's proven a lot of people wrong that have doubted um, – They've proved a lot of people wrong that that have doubted them to this point, but who they're running into is a team that is at an unbelievably physically dominant level. And I have gone as far as to say this South Dakota State team is better than most of the North Dakota State teams that have gone on these successful runs. Yeah, and their season wasn't paved, cupcake paved schedule. They played tough teams. They played good teams, and they didn't have a lull or a slump. And whether that be cosmic and that this game is when it happens, okay, I don't see that. I don't see it going down like that. They are. They have been. They're built too well. They have too much uh, old leadership. They they just did, did not stumble this year. Montana stumbled at times, and maybe they're a better team for it. And maybe that's why they are able to to go on such an incredible run to get here. Uh, you could look at it both ways and be right. But to, it's so impressive to see a team just go about their business in, in South Dakota State and say, OK, look at what they did. Win, 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 win. They just kept winning. They didn't falter and they stayed on course. Montana, 
a little off course early, figured it out. And once they figured it out, they didn't stop. So if you are, if you believe that that makes, gives Montana the edge, cause they had a little more adversity that they had to, to battle against and dumb voters putting them at 17 and stuff like that, you know, when they deserve to be, but regardless, <laughs> however you, uh. however you, uh, align on that, you have to respect the fact that South Dakota state turned in a year, uh, that was so calm and just so bond villain going according to plan, according to plan, everything's lining up. You have to respect that aspect of it. And I think you have to respect what Montana did on the, on the opposite side. I think that South Dakota state wins by like eight points, eight points. Yeah. I don't just, I think Montana covers. I do. I, I, they, they've done enough for me to put my money where my mouth is and believe that they will cover. Here's the biggest thing too, is that last year, Last year, I predicted South Dakota State to win at the beginning of the year, and I think there was a little more speculation on who could be in that conversation. We go into the, the game against North Dakota State, and everyone's like, oh, look, North Dakota State is, has been here before. They're going to win this football game. And it ends up being a boat race. They blow them the hell out. And that North Dakota State team last year was a pretty good team, better than the North Dakota State team this year by far. Yeah. And you, it took you overtime to beat that North Dakota State team. I know I'm doing a weird transitive property here, but the simplified form of what I'm trying to say is that that South Dakota State team that boat raced a historically good football program, one of their biggest rivals, that team lost a couple of guys. Most of them, because of this COVID eligibility, decided to return for that fifth or sixth year for this extra time to set them up for where they are right now. The most notable player that they lost was Tucker Craft, who went on to the NFL and has been doing amazing things. But they returned most of their offensive line, the best running back talent in FCS football, two of the best receivers, better receivers in FCS football, one of the most experienced quarterbacks, a bunch of strong defensive players. That team that just won a national title, most of them are playing in this game. That, to me, is enough to sit here and say, why would I doubt South Dakota State? That is a Goliath for Montana to have to beat. I agree. And I will be surprised if they lose. I will be. It, it, I'd be legitimately shocked. That has to be stated. That's not a hot take. And I don't think anyone in their right mind should say that's a hot take. I would be freaking I would be shocked if South, Dakota, if State South Dakota State lost. And I would be impressed with Montana. And I'd be able to make sense of it because Montana is a very good team and they have the pieces. But I would be shoot surprised if South Dakota State does not win this game. I, I just would. And I think Montana keeps it close. But they have a certain... Uh, uh, air that they play with that they just don't get phased. It doesn't, it doesn't appear in their body language. It doesn't appear ever. When we saw that slop fest versus them versus uh UNI and it was back to back turnover, 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 turnover. South Dakota state was like, all right, we're still playing ball. We got the ball back. And then if we go back on defense, we'll turn them over again. Like just their confidence level. And then they're, they're just their body language. You could just tell that they don't get phased by little stuff like that. And that only happens with vet with, with veteran players. It's so rare to find underclassmen that don't, don't get phased if they get beat deep on a crazy pass or, you know, they had a false start that cost a, a, a play to come back. No, South Dakota State does not have that bug. They don't get bit by that. Uh, so it, it's just it, – I, I will be floored if, if they don't win. We'll see what happens this Sunday – at Joe DeLeon, at Sanderson Radio. We will, we will be providing a reaction and a recap to the game afterwards. So stay tuned. Enjoy your weekend and enjoy the game. And everyone who's in Frisco, sorry we couldn't make the trip, but enjoy uh, what, I'm sh what I assume is going to be a very um, drunken weekend for our friends that we know that are going to the yeah. game. Uh, and we'll be looking forward to seeing what happens. Later, folks.